So, this morning, purification guidelines for those who consider themselves to be a spiritual practitioner. This is very interesting. Um, when I was putting the talk together this morning, I was thinking how practical and challenging purification is, and at the same time, is vital to those of us that are trying to learn how to master our physical, emotional, mental bodies so that we can make higher contact, so that we can prepare ourselves for not only the rest of this incarnation, but future incarnations. So this is something that may be um, not real exciting to listen to, but outrageously important for us to practice. I also realize that it is not for everyone. Uh, some people are, are very much struggling in their day-to-day -day life just to survive. But I do suggest as you listen to this talk that you make notes. And when I give you a particular step or exercise to practice, if it speaks to your heart, make a note of it. So even if your day-to-day -day struggles are pretty profound and overwhelming and you think, I just don't have time to engage in you know, these kind of practices, um, remember that these are gifts that you are giving to yourself. You know, this is not a burden. It's not a, a discipline that uh, will make you feel guilty if you don't practice it. Uh, it is like a birthday present that you're giving to yourself. So again, uh, you know, even though your life may be difficult, if you hear a particular uh, task or exercise that uh, or step that you would that really speaks to you, make a note of it, and then see how you can begin to kind of ease it into your day-to-day -day life. The coming years, these coming years, we are going to find with increasing pressure. We can't go back to the 50s and 60s. <laughs> so I say, good. <laughs> but my reference to that is back in the day when things were simple, and we didn't need a password and user ID <laughs> to gain access to our valuable information. <laughs> where we had time to uh, spend a Sunday afternoon just enjoying the spring or, or going to the beach in the summer. Uh, times like that are more and more precious to us today. But the teachings promise us <laughs> to realize that these coming years are going to find with increasing pressure Pressures of various kinds are increasing in the world, and we are seeing this all over the world. But if the body is purified, if our body is purified, it will be able to withstand these pressures. So that's the good news, and this is why it's so important just to take a few of these steps that I'm sharing this morning. Uh, to begin to try to ease them into your life. Now, this is what's going to happen if we allow ourselves to practice some of these steps that are physical, some are emotional, some are mental. I have like seven steps to share for the physical body, three for the emotional, five for the mental, and five steps that we can practice for our spiritual bodies. So there's plenty to pick and choose from. But as these pressures come, then the body, whatever body, physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, whatever body it is, will automatically release the forces that have been accumulated in the etheric centers, <coughs> bringing more energy and beauty to the body. So, if you're not familiar with the term etheric body, the etheric body is our health body, it is our energy body. 
At the same time, the opportunities to achieve higher states of consciousness and to make greater contacts with higher forces are also increasing. So do you see, if you see this is actually a process that we are putting ourselves through to, to first recognize that whatever is going on in the emotional body, whatever is occurring in our thought life, in our mental body, and in our spiritual <coughs> life, all of these three bodies are affecting our physical body. So our physical body is, is reflecting, or is like a mirror, to these other three bodies of our human mechanism. If the body is pure, and if our sensitivity becomes increasingly refined, then we are going to have more opportunity to sense higher contacts, and to come in contact with those who can bring us wisdom and energy and joy and purity. There are many practical steps we can take to purify our physical body. The first steps concern the purification of our physical life and our relationships. <coughs> our physical life and our relationships. So there's seven steps. The first one will come as no surprise to you, and that is to pay attention to the food that you eat. The food we eat must be carefully chosen, and it should be as fresh as we can possibly find or even grow. To have proper digestion, we must do two important things when we eat. We must never eat when we are angry. Now this is something your grandparents may have told you. It's certainly something my granny raised me with. But she said, don't ever eat if you're angry. And the teaching is saying the same thing. Don't eat if you're hateful, if you are irritated, if you're jealous, if you're revengeful, or if you're emotionally upset in any way, don't eat. Now look at the weight you're going to lose. <laughs> I know, I just had to put that in. <laughs> the body cannot digest it if we eat in this condition, and this is why. This is the science behind this particular step. When our emotions mix with our food, when these kind of emotions <coughs> mix with our food, it creates a poison. So there's a chemistry going on here, and it creates a poison in our whole system. In ancient times, people were taught that before eating, they should create peace, peace within themselves. They were taught to keep silent for a few minutes at the table and to bless the food before they start eating. When we think about You know, the kind of food we eat and wanting to eat fresh food and, and think about the digestion process that's going on with our stomach. Um, we must realize that there are certain glands that are very active in our stomach. We don't have to know what those glands are. You can look them up like I did uh, on Wikipedia or in Google. But it is surprising to see how many glands are involved with the digestion process. And if we're not digesting our food properly, then we are not going to be able to go into higher or more refined spheres of consciousness and assimilate uh, guidance and inspiration uh, or even make contact with higher realms of, of life in any clear sense of, of the word. So, we're going to choose our food very carefully. We're going to choose what we eat very carefully. We're not going to eat if we're having, uh, if we're emotionally upset in any way. We must not eat in a hurry. And this is the second point of what we must pay attention to when we eat. We must not eat in a hurry. 
we must eat slowly and calmly and chew our food very carefully. Proper chewing hastens digestion and spares the stomach excess work. So if you're having digestion problems, this is what you could do. Instead of taking antacids, slow your eating down, chew your food very, very carefully. One of the nutritional classes that I took many years ago, the teacher in that class said, if you have 32 teeth, you must chew 32 times. <laughs> I thought that was interesting. The second thing we must do to purify our physical life concerns what we drink. It concerns the things that we drink. We must drink things that are really pure. It is becoming increasingly difficult to find pure liquid, teas, waters, whatever. But we must check the water that we drink. I absolutely encourage you not to drink osmosis water or water that's gone through the process of osmosis. Uh, I don't have time to go into that, but it is a well-proven fact. Now, I, I had said many, many years ago, don't drink water that has, been, that has been taken through the osmosis process, and people thought I was crazy. But if you look, it's what science is saying now. Uh, what a, soft water, if you have your water softened you know, in your home, don't drink that water, don't bathe in it. In other words, turn off your faucets. It is not healthy for you. We must drink things that are really pure. It is also important to be careful about the teas that we drink. Sometimes the wrong combinations of herbs in our tea can be poisonous to the body. The way we drink is also important. Many people take a glass of water and just drink the whole thing up all at one time, or a bottle of water and just glug it down all at once. But this is not good for those glands in our stomach. It floods the stomach and distorts the chemistry of the glands in our stomach, especially if the beverage is very cold. So I, my way is to have as many ice cubes as I can pile into that glass <laughs> and to drink, but I only sip it. So that's my justification. <laughs> but I know, you know, drinking tepid water is probably the best for us. So don't follow my example. <laughs> many digestive ailments can be relieved by drinking slowly. So here we have, you know, for having digestion problems, we're told to choose our food carefully, make it fresh, eat slowly, and chew your food at least 32 times. <laughs> now we have to drink our water very slowly. This is the way many teachers in the Middle East and Far East taught their students to drink water. Sip it, drink it slowly. Alcohol must be used with extreme moderation and discrimination. We must be especially discriminating about the occasions on which we drink. For example, the Ages Wisdom tells us that in advanced circles, drinking alcohol is only allowed in times of joy, great joy, and it is forbidden to drink in any negative emotional condition because alcohol directly affects the emotional chemistry and can cause violent or distorted reactions. Notice that we're not talking about how alcohol affects the liver here or other particular glands. We're talking about the chemistry of the emotional body and how alcohol uh, if we're drinking alcohol in any negative emotional condition, will directly affect our emotional chemistry. This is very advanced teaching. The word sounds simple, but it's a very advanced teaching and something for us to deeply consider. And the reason being in this case is that if we allow ourselves to drink in, in this kind of a, that kind of an environment, it can cause violent or distorted reactions. 
not just in our personality behavior, but with our body. It is damaging to, to the health to drink alcohol because when you have a problem or you are very worried or upset, again, it damages the chemistry in your body. Besides, problems come to you in which that you can find solutions, but when you drink, you cannot find solutions to your problems because your brain is dimmed. See how, how clever and how subtle and yet powerful this teaching is. It is saying you have a problem. Typically, you can solve most of your problems yourself. You don't have to go to this doctor and that doctor and this psychiatrist and that psychologist because you have this incredible power within you, this divine mechanism within you that will, like the sun, you know, give you revelation and help you resolve the problem. But if you are drinking, if you are drinking, it means your brain is dimmed. And you will not be able to find the right solution. The third area of physical purification is our sexual life. Our emotional and mental, as well as our physical impurities, can be transmitted during sexual relations. This is something all parents need to teach their boys and girls, their sons and daughters. It is very important not to have relations with someone, for example, who is angry, who is irritable, revengeful, hateful, nervous, using drugs, or is mentally ill. See how powerful this is? And so practical at the same time. All these things transmit auric poisoning into the other person. The fourth is sleep. We should not watch violent criminal movies or television programs and then try to sleep because the subconscious impressions will control our mind all through the night. Sleep means to give total relaxation to the body. And total relaxation cannot be achieved if our mind is still occupied with the impressions coming from these kinds of media and movies. Another good idea before we sleep is to kneel down and pray, and in doing this to bless your enemies. Bless all those who give you trouble. Blessing radiates some kind of electrical energy that prevents attacks taking place on us. With your blessing, you neutralize you actually neutralize those who hurt you, who spoke ill of you. Blessing gives you God's favor, and you build a shield around yourself so that your enemies have no power to attack you while you are asleep. In order to sleep, Really deeply, you must try not to eat or drink alcohol after sunset. Of course, in the summer months, that's pretty easy. <laughs> in the winter, it's more difficult when it gets dark at 5. And of course, if you live in, in certain parts of the world where it's never light, well, then you've got to work something out. <laughs> the fifth is speech. Remember, I said there are seven to the you know, physical purification, seven steps. The fifth is speech. Physical purification does include speech. When we talk, when we talk, this is something I find absolutely fascinating. Mental and emotional electricity. When we talk, mental and emotional electricity mixed with the electricity of our breath, passes through our aura. When we speak negatively or in an evil way, we literally dump poison into our auric pool. 
or the pool of our aura. Speech is a channel through which mental and emotional energies, good or bad, are channeled into our aura. This is why lofty, beautiful speech energizes and uplifts the aura, and the aura reacts and purifies or energizes the body. So you see the, the this is the aura. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see the part, this important part that our aura plays in the process of helping the process of the physical body purify? But it is such a finely tuned instrument that it's going to react and thus de-energize and causes us to be sick or it purifies and energizes us and helps us to be more creative, more joyful, and inspired. Malice and slander, gossip and criticism, and even bad jokes. All these things pollute our aura. A polluted aura makes the body weak and open to germs. So number six is money. Money carries the auric emanations of all those who have touched it. When you put a dollar into your pocket, the negative emanations of others seep into your aura. I know, that's, that's pretty horrible. Just like a drop of ink, when you spill it into a glass of water, it slowly colors the whole <laughs> glass of water. Antiques and used clothing also carry the emanations of those who used them. Now I know some people, you know, prefer to buy their clothes because of finances at a um, new to you kind of, you know, uh, store. Well, if you find yourself needing to do that, you can still, you know, do that, but take some precautions. Uh, one of the precautions is to hang the clothes out in the sun for two or three days. And then another thing you can do is if it's not a really big garment or a blanket, you can, or maybe you can even do it with a blanket, but put it in a plastic bag and put some drops of eucalyptus oil inside that bag and then put it out into the sun. And it can cleanse any emanations of those who used, you know, your newly acquired property. Another thing you can do is to find out who used this article before you. So like, you know, if your teacher gives you something that belonged to him or her, you don't have to put it out in the sun <laughs> or in a <the> bag. <laughs> you know, now it's a talisman. Now it is something that when you touch or hold, that it is sacred and beautiful. You can do the same thing with the house that you've moved into in terms of finding out who lived in that house before you did. You know, what kind, was it a married couple? Was it a happy marriage? Um, were there happy children? Were there healthy people in the house? Uh, did they smoke? Did they booze it up? Uh, you know, what was going on? How was that house used? So that you can determine then whether this is a house for you to move into or not. You need to find out if the house is occupied by a criminal or by people who fought continuously. If you want to live a life of spirituality, a life of what we call discipleship, you must know, you must either know these things or be so powerful that you can clean that house with your own radiation. Okay, so those are the seven steps for the physical body. The next <coughs> is the emotional body, and we have three, three steps. Bless you. <laughs> the purity of the emotional body is also affected by our emotional states. Now this is interesting. The emotional states control our lymphatic system. 
our emotional states control our lymphatic system, the glandular system, and the bloodstream. Those three points, the lymphatic system, the glandular system, and the bloodstream. So we have joy and love and peace that we must put into our emotional nature. Joy uplifts us. Sorrow makes us attached to our pains and suffering. Love makes all of our organs and glands function normally. Whenever we hate, we cut the life thread within us and we cut ourselves off from the source energy sources of our astral and mental centers. Hatred is like a poison in the body. God is love. If we want to be with God and live with God, then we must love. Peace is the third one. Peace balances our nervous system, our lymphatic system our nervous system and our lymphatic system, peace. So, meditation. If we can't go to the seashore, if we can't hike through the mountains, if we can't sit out in our hammock Sunday afternoon, <laughs> I know it's my past. Uh, <laughs> what we have available to us is 15 minutes spent in meditation and prayer. Mental. Now, because of time, I'm going to talk a little bit more rapidly here. Our mental states also control our nervous system and our etheric system. Our mental states control our nervous system and our etheric system. So there are five mental states we can practice to achieve a greater purity of body. The first is detachment. Detachment purifies our body. Attachment poisons the body. Purity and energy come to our body when we learn to detach or to renounce something we have or we know. I was thinking, I think it was two or three weeks ago, and I gave a talk on renunciation. And darn, if I didn't go right out that afternoon, I had to pick up my dog to take it to a doggy class, and I wore my specialist best bracelet in the whole world, and it somehow fell off my wrist. <laughs> and I thought, gee, just be careful what you talk about. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a great exercise, and, and I decided that it, it truly was a beautiful bracelet, and I know somebody will be enjoying it right now because it is so beautiful. You know, and I was not attached to it, so I was so glad. But it was a real test of thinking, oh, it's gone. Well, somebody will get it. Yeah. Renouncing, renunciation is important. Most of our life is controlled by our attachments, just like octopuses we attach to each other. We attach to our money. We attach to our boyfriends and girlfriends and our spouses. And our attachments sap us and drains us of energy. When we detach, we start becoming ourselves. So you may have a little resistance to, to this particular point, but as you you know, I said, it kind of ease these steps into your life. So as you ease detachment into your life, see how the result is when you start to become your true self. The second one is beauty. The third is unity, and the fourth is freedom, and the fifth is striving. So our beauty, unity, freedom, and striving. Let me speak a minute about freedom. We must be a free human being. We must find a way to be a free human being. Remember, now this is a mental state we're talking about. In order to be a free human being, 
which then registers through that physical body that is a mirror of what's going on in our emotional mental bodies, right? <coughs> so freedom is very important. We must also give freedom to others, and this means don't impose your attitude, your ideas, and your thoughts on others. Don't impose them. Leave them, leave others to be free, to be themselves. This is an interesting statement. If you are imposing yourself and stealing the freedom of others, you are actually making yourself a slave of your own ideas and thoughts and plans. And of course, that equals fanaticism. You make yourself free in giving freedom to others. OK, the spiritual states which affect the purity of our body. The first is vigilance. OK, so vigilance means more awakeness. When I ask somebody, did you observe this, or did you know this, or did you realize this? And they said, no, no, no. You know, this had nothing to do with me. That means that you are asleep, that you're not being watchful. If we have vigilance, we stand on our principles, and we are really, really watchful. Vigilance then brings purity to the body. Now, this is a spiritual state we're talking about here. One day, decide to be really watchful about what you read and think and feel and say. The next day, you're going to notice that your body is more energetic. Now, here's a quote. Vigilance is part of the new age healing process. Vigilance is part of the new age healing process. The second point is enthusiasm. Everything done in a half-hearted way destroys your energy. Anything you do with all your heart increases your energy. See? So isn't that, I mean, isn't this easy? Well, it really wasn't this morning. <laughs> When I woke up, uh, oh, I could just like to take this morning off. Uh, wait a minute, what was one of those points? <laughs> so I started thinking about the talk and all the points of five and three and seven and five and what they were, and, and I got that enthusiasm kicked into full, full force. So one of the secrets of the health of the body is enthusiasm. Enthusiasm is a fiery wholeheartedness in action. The third is contact. This is very beautiful. Try to make a contact with your master, with your teacher, with God, and say, Lord, I love you. I know you are watching me. Say, Lord, I love you. I know you are watching me. If you know that someone is watching you, sooner or later you're going to come into the light and make yourself beautiful. The fourth is sacrifice. Try to do sacrificial work for others as much as possible. And the fifth is fearlessness. In all conditions, fight against fear. Try to fight against fear. Remember the President Roosevelt that said, we have nothing to fear but fear itself. Fear is a really strong beast, and it is not easy to kill it. So destroy fear. If we destroy fear, we release our body from so many tensions and poisons. Fear is the focus which accumulates all the destructive forces in our body. That's what fear does. It accumulates all destructive forces in our body. If we overcome fear, our body will be pure. We will live longer, healthier, 
and we'll be more likely to be able to make those right decisions. A disciple can penetrate into the fiery world only because of his or her purity. Okay, I don't see any questions. So do, is there a question? Okay, I, it's not on my, is it? Oh, can I speak more about vigilance being the new age healing process? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can. It, uh, basically, if we understand the term vigilance as being watchfulness, this means a spiritual tension is created within your whole physical, emotional, mental, spiritual mechanisms. Spiritual tension is the way we tune our instrument. Uh, it is like you know, when I used to play the violin, I would never engage in a performance using the violin without tuning it first. So when we sit down to eat, we're going to tune our instrument by praying, by blessing our food. When we undergo an emotional situation that begins to, you know, cause us stress and anger and, and so forth, if we are watchful of what's happening with our emotions, which is practicing vigilance, then we can automatically or instinctively, eventually instinctively, stop and recalibrate our emotional body to make it a pure note, pure harmony. So as we reconstruct, uh, recalibrate our physical, emotional, mental, spiritual states, what is happening is that we are cleansing, we are purifying, we are harmonizing the, all the states of, of activities going on with this very complex human mechanism, and thus New Age healing. Vigilance equals the New Age healing process. Okay? Okay, that's, so that's the short answer. <laughs> okay. Okay, um, is that it? Uh, any way can, can, is there any way the steps, steps can be printed out? Really, um, I suggest that uh, during the week you, you have access, gain access to the White Mountain YouTube site. And, uh, and listen to it, you can pause it and you can make notes. You know, it'll take a little bit of time, but it's so worth it. You know, it is so worth it. Uh, here's another question. How may we wisely share our used clothing uh, by giving them to dear friends, coworkers, or children in our family? Sure, uh, but even, even having said that, I would give them a gift after I hung the clothes, you know, in the sun, you know, and, and make sure they're not overworn, you know, well-born. Right. Uh, but with our kids particularly, you know, we, we don't, things are so expensive these days, clothing for children, and they grow out of them so rapidly. Uh, you know, it's good to give hand-me-downs as long as they're fairly new in condition. But you can spray them with, you, can, you know, you can put a few drops of eucalyptus oil in some water and just spray the clothing, stick it out in the sun for an hour, and it will be fine. Because you know the source, you know, who bore the clothing and rings and objects and so forth. Okay. <laughs>